So I'm going to go into performance when optimizing UEVR games. A lot of people have been comparing things to other mods, but it's quite different. For this game, I'll be using Lies of P as an example. It has pretty much all the options you'd expect from modern games. Your particular game might not have all of these options. Um, it might have some of them, uh, but it's a good example and comparison point. Um, quite a modern game and this is quite well optimized so th this is one of the best cases uh, as an example so um, before kind of doing anything with UEVR you first want to look at your actual in-game settings um, like you'd be playing it flat you want to optimize it for your performance of your monitor and in this case our headset Generally, you want to turn VSync off, but then you want to look for things like AMD Super Resolution. If you have an AMD card, um, you want to set that to one of the different levels. Uh, DLSS works really well uh, with native stereo as well. And of course, going into your um, various graphics options. Some of these will benefit performance more than others, and it does depend on the game. Uh, unfortunately, there's no digital foundry of UEVR games yet, but generally things like shadows, uh, foliage rendering, uh, LODs, um, reflections, volumetric effects um, tend to be quite big hits on performance. So try those first or just set everything to low and increase um, and do a kind of trial and error. It's always good to see how well low looks. And in Lies of P, actually, low looks really good. It's very, it's very difficult to tell the difference. Um, and yeah, it looks it looks great. So um, another thing I'll do there is I'm actually changing the world scale. So if you do have some issues with performance, um, especially in a third person game, um, playing it in a tiny world scale can make some of the more poor quality textures or effects look way sharper and will allow you to have much lower resolutions potentially. Um, if your game doesn't have DLSS or AMD FSR, you can go into the uh, console CVARs and there's an option here called Temporal AA Algorithm. If you turn that on from 0 to 1, uh, it acts as a uh, upscaler, similar to DLSS but not as good. Um, I like quality free and then you just lower your screen percentage to something lower than 100, so something like 80. And again, you'll get a, a good boost in performance from doing that if the game doesn't offer any, any upscaler. Um, and it may be that you can uh, low, high, increase the resolution or increase graphical effects. So here you can see I've got Oculus Mirror up and um, you can see my headset is set to 72 hertz. And you can see the headroom in terms of how much performance we've got left until we start losing frames in the, the right hand graph. And generally you want to test play a few scenes with lots of action to see if you've got the right settings if that's really high then maybe you can increase some settings if it's quite low um, then you, you might want to, to lower things things like resolution um, changing the upscaler from quality to performance mode potentially or, or changing it just to something like balanced um, or um, lowering specific settings or resolution so you can see how actually in this, um, I've changed everything to best and it looks pretty good. It's only slightly better, but it does look pretty amazing. Um, and I just lowered my DLSS upscaler from quality to balance to give me a nice amount of head headroom. So we go and attack some enemies just to check. Um, there's no like big dips or anything. You said there was one dip there, but um, in the headset, actually, I didn't notice this at all. Um, and like loading into new areas can sometimes cause that. So it's good to turn this on. This is with the Oculus debug tool. If you uh, don't know about it, you can turn on this um, graph uh, just to, to show what, what's what's happening uh, when you're using Air Link or the Link Cable. Um, but next, I'll go into Virtual Desktop, which is another good um, options. You can change your refresh rate there. Um, and that's quite useful for things like fighting games that are locked to 60 hertz. You really need to be running at 120 hertz for them to look smooth. Uh, so that's something to remember. And you can control your resolution here, uh, but you can also do it in the OpenXR um, resolution scale. Uh, but do leverage features like that Snapdragon Upscaler, um, Asynchronous Space Warp, uh, Increased Color Vibrance. Um, and the automatic setting for the Space Warp is, is pretty good, I think, for Virtual Desktop. 
So you can see me loading up the save now. And um, the, the color vibrance is something you immediately notice from virtual desktop. Um, some games like Liza P you might want to disable that, but things like Tekken 8, it, it look really good. Um, and just um, check that you got that performance overlay. And with this, just make sure none of the numbers are going orange, um, especially like things like the frame rate and the latency. Uh, things like your network latency, you, you can control with your router. Um, but things like dropping your resolution down, having lower settings will make sure that you're keeping that target. So in this one, I'm, I've set it to 120 her, um, hertz. Um, so lowered the resolution a little bit. Um, and with the Snapdragon upscaler and the space warp in virtual desktop, you can get a very uh, good experience, um, surprisingly, uh, with these native games, just like a native VR game. And um, you'll be surprised at the kind of level of hardware you can run. Uh, one of our testers has a 3060 laptop. Um, yeah, this is my overview of UEVR performance and tips and tricks.